Vladivostok is really at the center of many, many countries. It's between Russia, it's next to China, one of the world's biggest economies, near Korea, near Japan. It's a gateway to all the um, Central Asian countries as well as to Asia. So there really should be nothing stopping Vladivostok. I was uh, suggesting that perhaps it could become a digi digital valley to rival Silicon Valley, actually. What's stopping it? It's a very beautiful and inspiring place, and Russia has great programming capabilities. You know, Russian engineers are in huge demand everywhere in the world. So I really think there's nothing stopping this area actually doing this. And it needs kickstarting energy fundraising and recognizing that it's at the center of the world. On one hand, uh, computer uh, scientists and engineers, um, people who work directly with uh, uh, digital things, um, they are not the same uh, people who work with Ventec and not the same people who work in regulations, not the same people as entrepreneurs. Yeah. Do you feel that there is uh, there's an increasing awareness of what the cryptocurrencies are among those people, among people who are in finance, people who are um, in um, business rather than just pure tech? Well, there's obviously a massive amount of vested interest in people's existing jobs, careers, structures, because if you sat down to redesign a financial system today, given the um, capability of the internet, digital communication, you wouldn't set up a structure like we have at the moment. And I think even the Russian central bank is attached to having a digital currency because there's so many more possibilities now. So I think some programmers become entrepreneurs. And they're often part of a team which would develop um, a new business. For example, there's a, um, a business which raised uh, over four billion US dollars in an ICO called Block One, which has an EOS platform. And one of their founders is a Hong guy. And I think one of their founders is also a programmer. So it tends to be a combination of talents. And it's really enabling that talent. That's the important thing. And it's also creating value through it. I mean, Vladivostok is at the center of an area which is um, crucial for transshipment. You could see um, blockchain applications for agribusiness, for sustainable fisheries, um, to map out the huge resources of the area. I mean, all of these are sort of could be the catalyst in this sort of um, to oil the wheels of this type of very real trade economy but to make it happen in a much smoother way. And that type of logistics um, blockchain and other digital applications could also serve the rest of the world. It doesn't have to be stuck here. And I think people talk about this area not having a large population, not having a talent, but if there was a digital valley environment of recognizing this as the center of the world, possibly with some incentives, certainly with transparency and clear uh, regulation, then I don't see why it would attract many, many people. There's a lot of vibrancy in this area. What would it take to create such a zone here? Does it take uh, just a, a desire from, from the local authorities, or would there be a necessity to establish proper uh, training, education, to set up all these things here? Or maybe a foreign specialist or experts who are going to be setting this up? Or Russia will can, can Russia do Russia has their... its own experts, it really has. I mean, the Russians I meet in Hong Kong are all doing amazing things. And perhaps one of the things that could kickstart it would be an incubator or several incubators. I'm actually working with some uh, clients in Hong Kong who are of Russian origin and they are setting up an incubator in Hong Kong. So that's an incubator which will, there's many, many examples in the States, but it basically would groom a whole, um, would screen and groom new businesses in the digital space. It would evaluate their projects and then for the, for the ones which it selected, they would um, provide them with some kind of funding grant, training, um, and in return for that, to take a section of the equity of the company, not a large amount, and help them to move on to the next level of having funding. So that type of um, environment for, could really kickstart SMEs. And as I mentioned, by its nature, this type of technology is disruptive. So it, many. Um, companies like that will start and they'll fail and they'll, those same people will go on eventually to create successful businesses because a lot of this is agile development, it's trial and error. Um, I don't think that necessarily a top-down approach to this kind of innovation is the best approach, but this innovation does need the environment to flourish in. Uh, do you think there are some some new things that we can expect uh, with the use of blockchain technology? I mean, we've, we've seen in many applications with
with uh, cryptocurrencies. We've seen smart contracts in many areas in production and trade and agriculture, like you mentioned. Uh, there's also crowd blending, which is not known here in Russia as well as it's known in, in the Asia. And I know Russian guys who were here on our program uh, talking about crowd blending projects in Singapore. Um, are there any new things that we can expect in the coming years? Well, this is a technology which is good. The, the limits of its applications are really just the limits of people's imagination as to what could be improved through digitalization. Um, obviously, we still have to breathe air, we still have to eat food, um, a lot of people like to material goods. Um, so the, the, there's a constraint that it cannot replace that. But in terms of the actual wheels of an economy, a lot of parts of that can be replaced. Now some of it will not be the most efficient way of doing it. But Vladivostok, for example, could be a small city. You could organize the rubbish collection through um, blockchain solutions. Somewhere like Estonia has actually gone the direction of having e-identity so that everybody wants to can have a digital identity including non-Estonians. I actually went through the application process to try it out and that would allow you to do all kinds of things like open a bank account. If you're Estonian it would allow you to vote, it would allow you to pay your taxes. It would mind shift everybody online.